Hi everybody, you know, welcome to my podcast, bringing on a special Halloween edition with a lot of guests and especially the my favorite people from the paranormal field. So you see, uh, you know, MJ, um, Mark, Lauren, Shane, Glenn, uh, T Tracy from TAPS, Samantha Haas, Brian Kano. So that's the people, there's Scott Grunewald. So right there, you got like the core of my people that you know that I bonded with through the years. And uh, it, it's incredible because I was talking with Shane yesterday and brother, me and you, we, we met on Twitter like five years ago, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it was five years ago on Twitter. Incredible, five years ago, and uh, here we here we are right now. And you, you know, Mark, you're uh, you and Lauren are on fire, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, Salem Con is going to be its third edition already uh, next April. Yeah, April twenty first and twenty second of uh, two thousand seventeen at the Hawthorne Hotel again. Yeah, we'll be doing Salem Con uh, with our. We've already got a great guest lineup. Uh, Few of them announced already with Chip Coffee and John Zaffis and Brian Cano and Scott Grunewald coming back, mm -hmm. and uh, you know a few more guests still to be announced. But as always, we we hope it's going to be a fun time for everyone. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. But uh, it keeps getting bigger and bigger each year. So I I, I can't wait to see what next year is going to be like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I always say you know it's the event of the year and no drama. That's a big thing. That's a big difference between. Uh, You know, if people were asking me if I have to go to one convention this year, where would, where would you go? I'd go to Salem. You know, unfortunately, I missed last year because I was sick. But you know what? This year, I'll be there 120%. I already took my uh, week off to, be, to, be, to make sure. <laughs> you better be there. I will. There. <laughs> It's the one event each year I don't want to miss either. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's, you know, not only with the events, but, you know, Mark, you and Lauren, you know, the, the growth you've had over the, the past few years, you know, with all those people, all the investigations that you've done. And uh, you even had the Hunt mentioned a few weeks ago, an event that you organized there, too. That's uh, very proud of you, brother. I'm looking at you and Lauren as the, uh, you know, the, we always talk about John Zaffis and the John Tobins and those people. I always said, you know, it's kind of like John Tobin's legacy, but at the same time, it takes people like you, you know. To you know, to bring the legacy and bring you know the, a new generation of uh, paranormal investigators into the field, and uh, you guys are doing it. Yeah, we, I, thank you, Don. That's really nice to say. Yeah, we we definitely appreciate that. Um, the Houghton event that we just had was what you just said couldn't have been more true at that event because I mean it was what I there was a ton of new faces that we haven't seen at one of our events before. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was awesome to see all these new people sort of coming into the, the circle and, and investigating and, and, and joining into the fun that we like to have. And, you know, it's it's something when I, whenever we bring new people in and, and they come in and they have a good time and they, they, they tell us afterwards that they learned something or they can't wait for this or that, uh, I feel like we've done something great for not only the location that we're at, but also for the field itself, you know, to bring people in that they can have an enthusiasm and excitement about investigating exactly and you've you've been very involved also with the paramount database which is a great thing tell me more for yeah. or, or for the people that don't know you know that's a great great thing you know you you and lauren are involved in right now with this yeah lauren and i got together with uh the guys from paranormal warehouse uh, michael diamond and chris Bregenzer. And, you know, we, Michael approached us because he had the idea. And I'm like, dude, I've been thinking about this for a while. Lauren and I have been chatting about it. So it was one of those, they already had sort of the, the, the blueprint of it. And we all got together and put our heads together and figured out how we could make it so that investigators would want to use it and, and make it useful for the field. And, you know, if you, if you have any questions about it, it's paranormaldata.com. Um, it's a place to go and share your evidence from locations. And what it is going to do for the field is it's easy for people to research that evidence because all they're going to do is type in, like, you know, Houghton Mansion. And whoever's uploaded evidence to Houghton Mansion, it's going to pull up there. And then you can start cross-referencing and read case files and things. It's called research. It's what we all should be doing. You know, and you can do it before or after you go to the location just to kind of compare with your own evidence. But... You know, it's starting to build a catalog so the locations themselves can even showcase the evidence as to say, hey, look, you know, you want to know what people caught here? Go to Paranormal Database and, and, and type in the name of this location and you'll find it. Yeah. 
So it's pretty cool. It, it is. It is because that's exactly like we said. You know, we're never going to have uh, paranormal unity because there's always going to be people who are in there just for the fame. Or, but if we get like 85 percent of people to to work towards the same goal, you know, we've done our job. You know. Absolutely, I agree with you one hundred percent. And there's always going to be guys like. Like, like you, like, like Brian, you know, Brian is always willing to, uh, I, I, I did a podcast this week with Brian and I was like, oh my God, you know, this guy is such a genuine, uh, cool, and uh, it's, you know, he's still young, but he, that, that guy's been around for a, a long, long time, been involved with John, and uh, I know that in the past few years you've gotten to know John a lot more, you've even had a chance to investigate with him. And uh, tell me more, Mark and Lauren, both of you, you know, uh, how... It changed you as an investigator and also as a person, you know, to be able to spend more time and travel with John, John's office. So John is one of those people that I think any one of us who's an investigator can say that it would be an honor to at least even be con considered to investigate with John, even just to be to learn a little bit, have a conversation with him. The first time I ever talked to John, I... I I couldn't believe that I was in the presence of John Zappas. He, he, I consider him a mentor. He's an idol of mine. And now, uh, you know, a few years later from that first encounter, to be able to have sat and actually investigated with him and had the experiences that we had with him, I mean, it's it's one I'll never forget. It's for the record books for me. You know, it's, and I think Lauren can, can you know, say the same thing probably, right? It's a little nerve-wracking, not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Investigating with John Staffis. Yeah. You never know when he's going to tell you, don't say something like that. Or, no, quit with that questioning. Try the, try yeah. that. Or shut up, you're talking too much. Yeah. You never know what, what he's going to say, but but you have to take everything for what it for what it is, and you just learn from it. Don't be one of those people that's like, man, I don't like it because he he's, he's too critical and he tells me what to do. Well, that's the point. He's supposed to. Yeah. He's the godfather. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's and what Lauren just said is exactly, exactly the feeling you get because it's an honor to investigate with him. First of all, I think, but it, at the same time, John will tell you when you're doing something wrong, and he'll also tell you when you're doing something right. Yeah. So listen to everything he says and and, and watch what he does because he's doing it right. <laughs> you know, he's he's somebody that everybody should should model themselves after as an investigator. It's more experience and all of us combined. Yeah, absolutely, and and to the, just being able to we have, we got to to investigate in Gettysburg with him, and then after some experiences in Gettysburg, when we were going down to investigate the Payne House one night down in, in Rhode Island, we got the phone call from John to asking us to meet him in in, uh, yeah. in Mystic, Connecticut, and it was like what? So there we go, Lauren and I are in Mystic investigating with John, and and uh, you know some of what happened in Mystic, you can pick up his book Demon Haunted. And uh, the last chapter of the book has some of the experiences that we captured in Mystic, Connecticut with John. So, um, I mean, I, and I gotta, I'm going to take a, a moment here off to the side of that because this all kind of comes together with the fact that above and beyond everything we've done with John, I, I can 100% say that I am absolutely blown away and floored that Lauren and I had the opportunity to, to connect with and speak with Ed Warren from the other side and to have John verify that for us and back it up is it, it's mind blowing and it hasn't stopped. <laughs> it's still going on. So it's even more nerve wracking. It's uh it's pretty amazing and hopefully someday we can talk about more of it and then maybe have some more stuff that we can we can add in there. So Wow. Cool. Yeah. It's amazing stuff. You know, we're talking about the uh you know John Zeph is being the godfather, you know uh uh You know, Lauren and uh, and Head are the uh, you know the the pioneers of the paranormal the paranormal field. You know, in the United States, you know those guys with uh, uh, Alexandra Alzer's father. You know, uh, Hans Alzer. They, they're the guys that started the uh, you know the investigate. Not necessarily that we investigate today, but you know they, they they've been the pioneers in the field. You know. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they allowed it to become more mainstream, you know, like, like you're saying. It's, it's definitely because of people like, uh, like Hans Holzer and, and, and Lorraine that there are more of us out there doing it, and we have a blueprint as to, to what to start with and what the proper way to investigate is. Um, and, of course, Ed and Lorraine obviously being on some of the most famous cases that, 
that we can think of today with Amityville and the haunting in Connecticut and, and things like that. It's just unbelievable what, what they were went through and it, it helped shape all of us, I think, as investigators and paved the way for us today. Oh, definitely. And at the same time, though, even, even though it's a movie, but The Conjuring even has has kind of gotten people to ask questions about who Ed and Lorraine really were. So, you know, yeah, The Conjuring is not all... Not all of it was real. They didn't really scalp him. But, they, you know, they go and they ask questions. They want to know more about who they are. And then they get into the paranormal and they want to read the books and they want to watch the shows. And they, they the general population, the ones that maybe are interested in it, not because of the TV shows, but because of how do we see ghosts, are the ones that, are, you know, we want to look at the database. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Lauren, I wanted to ask you a question since it's all in podcast. What is the creepiest place you've ever investigated in all your years in the paranormal field? If there's one place, you know, that's still just thinking about it gives you the chills. Oh, uh, in all my three years. Uh, Fort William Henry, I think, was that was, was my creepiest place because I, I, I work there. And I was oftentimes there alone. And so I would experience things that were downright terrifying sometimes and it wasn't until I became involved in the paranormal that I was able to like reflect back on what had happened and some of them are still terrifying but then other things were you know ah, that happens all the time but yes yeah, Fort Lane Henry definitely and you were there Dom so you know oh my goodness yes definitely yeah I love that place you know I can't I can't erase the memory when we me and MJ were getting interaction you know in French And the minute, I think it was Mike, you know, he came down the stairs and it stopped and it said, get out. And then it kept talking to us and Mike was pretend, going up and the minute, you know, we, we could see him, it would stop talking. And the minute it would go up the stairs, you know, it would keep on talking in French. I was like, my goodness, you know, because Mike came in and spoke in English and he was even dressed. I, if I remember, I think he, he already put the dress of the, uh, the, the soldiers, you know, so uh, <laughs> that was amazing. And not only that, you know, we could hear the footsteps on top of us when there was nobody there. Uh, it was a very active place. That place really is very active. It's, you forget about how active it really is until we start talking about it. Just, I mean, experience after experience after experience there. Folio Henry was pretty cool. That, was, that, that place was fun. Yeah. And you, Mark, what, what is your, your, the, the creepiest place you've ever investigated, you know, uh, up to now? Uh, I would say the creepiest spot that I've investigated, for me, has to still be Penhurst. Yeah. Um, I've had some experiences in Penhurst that I can't, I can't shake and I can't get rid of. Um, there's been there's been a couple other places over the years. You know, we've had experiences at Houghton Mansion and the Irish Mist out in Troy, New York, and heck, even a place here in Gloucester that I, we can't disclose where it is. But I've had some weird experiences as of late. But the creepiest by far was Penhurst. Um, there were some. So, oh well. I say that, but, so, okay, so Penhurst was the creepiest. The strangest thing that happened to me on an investigation, Dom, and you would have loved this, was when we were down in Gettysburg, we were leaving after some crazy stuff happened at the Jenny Wade house and the orphanage. We were heading back to the farm we were staying at, and it was on the, it was on the same road, the farm was on the same road, we're driving along in the car, it was myself, Lauren, Um, who did we have with us? Kristen? Um, no, I think it was just you and I in the car. We had, uh, Mike and Liz were following us, but no one else was in the car with us. No, we had Kristen and Maggie with us. We had no. Kristen and Maggie with us. No, no. So we, and, and we were driving along because there were more people in the car with us. And all of a sudden, like, I, I remember seeing this house we were passing, and I thought in my head, oh, we're almost there. It's going to be right around this next corner. And then all of a sudden, I remember we were laughing, and then I remember going, Where the hell are we? And we were past the farm. We were getting onto a highway. And we had lost like five minutes of time. Like we had no idea how we got where we were. None of us remembered passing the farmhouse. None of us knew what had just happened. And just before this, right after I'd seen the house and thought, oh, we're going to be right around the corner, we heard, you know, we heard three knocks on like the trunk of the car. 
And then next thing I know, I'm like, where the hell are we? Yeah, we both like, we, we went so far past where we're we, supposed to We had to drive, we had to drive like miles out of the way on this highway to get back and turn around and come back to the farmhouse. We finally get back to the farmhouse. We come in and like, everybody's in there and, and, and uh, Jen Kratowski is like, where were you guys? We're like, oh, we don't know. And we explained what happened. And when I, we told her about the three knocks, she turned white and her, her jaw dropped. John was like, what? And Zappas was like, get the hell out of here. We're like, what's going on? So when we heard those knocks on the car and we, were, we lost time, I kid you not, you can ask them about it. You can ask Jen and Marcel and all the folks that were there. At the farmhouse, they were having a conversation because they had just gotten back. And then Jen, while she was talking, heard three knocks on the door of the farmhouse, got up, went to the door and opened the door expecting us to come in. And the other people, John and Marcel, were thinking, what are you doing? She goes, I thought somebody was out here. I just heard somebody knock. They heard it, too. They yeah. opened the door, like, not looking. She was just thinking and thought. She opened the door and there's nobody there. Nobody there. It was at the exact same time that we were hearing that in the car and then lost like five minutes of our life. <laughs> that's, in, that's incredible. You know, it's almost like the, the stories we hear when people, you know, get abducted, right? Right? Yeah. That's so, what I thought. I'm like, oh, my God, am I going to like years later have to go into like <laughs> psychotherapy and find out I was abducted by aliens right after ghost hunting? Great. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's the kind of thing, you know, that when it happens, you're not... But afterwards, it's always afterwards, right? That it really makes that you realize what you've been through. Like when I went kind of crazy in the Howard Mansion, it's only when you get back home a few days later that you realize, oh my goodness, what the hell happened? It's always when you look, you're a little bit like uh, looking back a few days, you know, and you're not into the zone, you know, that you really get that feeling of, oh my God, I, I can't explain it. I still can't, and I'm sure you, you might. The, the good thing or the, the bad thing is that we might never be able to to answer all these questions, but it makes it all more exciting. Yeah, uh, it was it was kind of at the moment. It was it, we laughed and laughed and laughed about it, but it was almost very terrifying at the moment because we didn't know where the heck we were. And, we, and, and the part where we realized we didn't know where we were, you felt like you were in the middle of nowhere because there was there was just. Like fields and getting yeah, fields and uh, no lights, and all of a sudden we're getting onto a highway, and it's like, what just happened? Where are we? You know, wow. and I, for all I knew, we were hours away for crying out loud until we could. I had to get the GPS on and and find out where exactly we were, and I couldn't believe how far away we were at the time. So it was it was very strange, um, but at the same time, you know, it, when we got back and then heard the other side that something was going on there. There was something crazy that happened that night that none of us can explain. You know, it was weird. So there's a, you know, that in Gettysburg, I, I totally understand because I've been there like four or five times. And every time I go back there, I feel like it's it's calling my name. You know, I, I it was the first big paranormal experience I've ever had was at, at Gettysburg. And every time I go back, you know, it's like a piece of me uh, stays there or, uh, and it wants me back, you know, it just keeps bringing me back. It, there's no, like, um, it's a beautiful place. It's quiet. It's not a big town, but there's just something about the, the air when you walk the battlefield or when you walk in, in Saks Bridge or there's just something there that you can't explain, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And it, it, you know, just 52,000 deaths in, in two days. You know, all the energy, you know, so, some people say, I don't know if it's true, but uh, I was talking to a farmer that, that that still lived in Gettysburg last time I was there with Glenn, and he told me that uh, the year before, it rained a lot, and in some parts of the battlefield, you could still see, you know, like, it, it was like red, like blood was still coming off the ground, you know, and we're talking like 120 years after, or to me, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> And he seemed serious, you know, like, um, it was incredible, you know, when you think about it, you know, they buried them in, you know, like, uh, even heard stories that sometimes, you know, there were so many bodies, they would just feed them to the pigs, and you think about it, it's totally gross, you know, what a sad way to go. Yeah, really. That's terrible. That's awful, yeah. And being killed by, it's not like an invading army, it's not, I always said, you know, the biggest difference between Gettysburg and when you go to Pearl Harbor or, stuff, or places like that, it's Pearl Harbor, you know, we were in a war, you know, World War II, but now we're fighting our cousins and brothers and sisters, 
it's totally different. It was not an invading army, you know. It was a guy living two states across from from either, you know, from us or from a. So that's that. Sometimes, you know, you had people from the same family fighting against each other. So, um, you know, it was it was very tragic, um, but at the same time, it's we we can't still lose sight of. Uh, it was still a war. It was still for a reason, and you know, unfortunately, even today. Everything that they fought for is is it's so delicate that the the situation with where everybody stands, you know, with racism and things of that nature. That yeah, everybody's free now, but there's still a lot of work that has to be done, and it should be done for the right reasons. And these people should not have ever died in vain. This has this has to things have to change, and things need to be fixed. But that, that's so true what you're saying, Mark, because that's kind of what we say when we're in the battlefields, right? That you didn't die in vain, you know, because of you, there's less, uh, well, there's still some, uh, you know, racism, but less than uh, that back then, you know? And uh, just the fact that we have, you know, a black president, you know, is just a good example. And now probably the first lady president, you know, that, it, things change. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Very true. Are we talking politics now? What happened? Hello. What happened to Star Normal? My bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the, the thing is now, I can't wait for uh, Salem Con next year. You know, I can't wait to uh, to go back and uh, see you guys. You know, I, I'd love to go back in the winter because there's something about winter investigations that, to me, it's exciting. Of course, it's not always fun to investigate when it's, you know, freezing, but there's less contamination, less people. And uh, there's just a feeling that, you, of course, you can't take a cold chill as evidence because it's minus 20 degrees. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I love investigating during the winter time. Yeah, it's cool. You know, it's totally different than summer where you have to, uh, you know, you're getting bitten by mosquitoes or stuff like that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I, I enjoy winter time, too, as long as, you know, conditions are tolerable um, and I'm not sick as a dog and dying and, You're dragging out onto a beach with you, but yeah. <laughs> so when you can, I feel like the air is cleaner and more crisp in the winter, and it helps move things around a little bit so that sound carries That's better. Hear better, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's true. It's totally true. And, uh, you know, so you, you guys keep busy. Do you still have a few things, uh, you know, planned around Christmas time? I know you got an investigation this Saturday. We do. Tomorrow night we're investigating uh, a place up in North Andover. Well, you're coming along. In My friend from New York is coming to visit, so I'm going to get New York bagels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well, Lauren's going to be making a late appearance to the investigation. <laughs> But uh, we'll be investigating tomorrow night with our friend Lucky Belcamino and Eric Knapp and his girlfriend Natasha. I think Kyle Palmer might be coming too. Mm -hmm. uh, but So we're going to be investigating with them tomorrow night up in North Andover, Mass. I think I can say where we're going to be. No? Um, yeah. All right, maybe I won't say where we're going to be. Yeah, we can say. Yeah, we can. Oh, whatever. It's the Parson Barnard House. Oh, uh, get trouble. Get trouble. Pretty cool place, though. Um, so we'll be there Saturday night. And then uh, I think that's all we've got going on anytime soon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's all we got on, on track for that right now. And then, of course, any private investigations that come along, we're always going to jump on those. Yeah, exactly. Next, starting up next year, we're going back to Gettysburg. I, I know that in February, and and then uh, we're going on to the Phenom Family Reunion mm -hmm. at the end of March, yeah, March right. and then we have Salem Con in April, and then who knows? <laughs> so hopefully, you know, I can make it during the winter. Uh, maybe spend it. We, we could go maybe to uh, Salem investigate one of the places that we investigated last year uh, or the year before. You know, like um, I don't the T-shirt place. That was awesome. Well, we got the, the Ouija, the Ouija session going, Lauren. You were there. <laughs> yeah. That was so scary. <laughs> that 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 I mean, ought to be one of the. <laughs> I never seen two women run up the stairs as fast as when we got that H E L L on the on the Ouija board, right? Holy sh! I I couldn't believe it. <laughs> They're like there were like ten of us, and then there was only me, Lauren, and uh, Tim Weisberg. <laughs> Thankfully, Lauren was still there because, you know, I couldn't film and uh, do the Ouija session at the same time, you know, but we, I was asking questions in French 
and English at the same time and getting responses both in French and English without even the way I was kneeling on the ground I couldn't see you know the the planchette so I couldn't be like okay it's me moving it to uh and at the end when we said you know it's you've earned the right to move on whatever you did and it said is there one last thing you want to say and it said mercy m-e-r-c-i thanks in french and lauren and i and tim were totally like holy cow wow this it was probably one of the first times i truly used the ouija board you know for uh, an investigation but it was like uh oh my god you know i should do it more often that was a, yeah, that was a, a WTF moment. <laughs> yeah, oh, d definitely. And just, you know, I, I listen, I know you, uh, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan, but this week, Robert Merch was on Talk, his Jericho podcast. And uh, I just listened to it coming back from work tonight. And I got to say, Mark, Lauren, if you have an hour, listen to this podcast. It was probably the best podcast I've ever heard in my life. You know, Robert is such, uh, you know, you, I think Chris talked for... Two minutes during the podcast, Robert totally nailed it. You know, he was talking about the history of the Ouija board, how they used it, who used it, uh, why are psychics against it. Uh, it. It was incredible. I was totally blown away. I was like, wow, this guy does the, uh, the paranormal feel a great reputation by his personality. And uh, that's incredible. What a guy. I I've never met him in person. I think once, but I didn't know him. But uh, that's a guy that I really love to be able to see in person and shake his hand and talk to him. Robert Merch. It's on the list. I'll put it on the list. Merch. Merch. <laughs> have, you met, have you met him, Mark and Lauren? Have you met uh, Robert? Didn't have, no, I don't think we met, ever met him in person. He was supposed to come to SalemCon last year, but then he had back surgery. So oh. he had to, <laughs> no pun intended, he had to back out. <laughs> 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 But uh, so we never got to meet him, and now he's moved to Colorado. Yeah, so. I moved, so that's off. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> but we, we were able to interview him, and yeah, he's a very—he's extremely knowledgeable, and he's really easy to talk to. And so I—I I, I believe every word you say when I meet with that interview. Well, well, it's uh, so listening to Robert Merch talk. You know, it, it opens your mind up a little bit to the Ouija board because, you know, for for what its purpose is and what what happens with it, it's not—it wasn't designed to be like a devil's tool. You know, it was. It's just pretty amazing what happens with it. Right. So I think once you listen to him and you hear him talk, your guard comes down a little bit about the Ouija board and you feel a little more comfortable with it. You know, much like, and this is going to be a weird topic, but much like listening to, like, Eric Werner, you know, Corvus Nocturnum, yeah. talk about Satanism. And you're like, oh, my God. He's like, look, we're not sacrificing goats and doing all that stuff. It's, it's interesting to hear him talk about that religion. It's not saying that I, I believe in it, but... Right you begin to understand how people could believe in it when you hear really what he, he's got to say. So it's interesting if you allow people to talk and you pay attention to them, how open your mind can become. Yeah. That's so true. Totally agree, Bart. And it's always a pleasure to talk to both of you, you know, your family, you know, like my brother from a, another mother and my sister from a different grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> different mister. <laughs> you know that's probably one of the funniest thing I ever posted was a video with Glenn and Susan where I totally uh, yeah my, my brother from a different brother or whatever it was so funny you know they, they still make fun of me <laughs> what matters is you know what I mean right <laughs> uh, well, it was awesome being on, brother. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you and I, I can't wait to talk again, and uh, hopefully see you before Sam Khan. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mark. Lauren, have a great, great evening. Thank you, Dom. Bye. Bye.